Ayed Atiwa uh, has uh, led a delegation of top government functionaries, uh, state and national assembly lawmakers, including members of his cabinet, on a private condolence visit to the Ibadan Oyo state residence of his former boss, late uh, Rotimi Akeridulu. The meeting was held away from the prying eyes of journalists at the Jericho residence of the Akeridulus. Shortly after the meeting, Governor Aida Tiwa described the demise of his former boss as a personal and national loss, stating emphatically that the late senior lawyer was an accomplished Nigerian who contributed in no small measure to national development. Under my leadership, government of Ondo State, on behalf of the good people of Ondo State, to pay a condolence visit to the immediate and extended family of our former governor, Arakunrelu Arutimi Odunayo Akiridulu, SCNCO, and who passed on uh, in his private home here in Ibadan. Yes, we have to do this because he has always been our leader, uh, a courageous one for that matter, one who who has governed on those state in the last uh, six and a half to seven years with, get, with great courage and with so many legacies that he has left behind. He's an exemplary leader, a courageous one, a leader that believes in fairness, equity, and justice. A senior advocate of Nigeria who speaks on national issues so that adjustment and proper decision can be made concerning any issue in Nigeria. So he's known for that as an activist. Today he's no more. We have to pay him that respect by coming to the family to condole with them, to commiserate with them. And we have done that. We pray that God will grant the families the fortitude to bear the irreparable loss and for those of us that he has left behind, to be able to uh, emulate some of the values, you know, the sterling qualities that he's known for, so that we can keep up with the legacies that he has left behind. On those state governor, Lucky Ayedatiwa. Joining me now is a former presidential candidate, Omoyele Shoari, who is also from Ondo State. Shoari, good to see you and thanks for your time as always. Uh, you first uh, give us a sense of how developments, uh, uh, how things are going in uh, Ondo State at the moment. Uh, let, let's first of all uh, jump to, uh, if we can backtrack, I recall you were one of those who spoke uh, while this uh, was on, specifically uh, talking about our constitutional uh, rules that must be adhered to when uh, the late governor was ill. And I'm quite sure you were excited, even though it was the state is still in mourning, you were excited that uh, at least the constitution was uh, obeyed uh, after all. Well, uh, thank you for bringing me on your show. The Constitution was not obeyed. They tried everything they can to ensure that they didn't meet constitutional standards in transferring power. Uh, all of this was unnecessary. We could have resolved this a year ago uh, because there was available evidence for us, from us, that uh, the governor was not likely to make it. But um, I blame those who were manipulating the people of Ondo states uh, and those who accepted that, including myself, uh, it took too long to intervene uh, before this was finally resolved. They did not hand over, they did not invoke the doctrine of necessity. As a matter of fact, by last week, they were still claiming that uh, the governor was going on back on vacation. And if I heard the, uh, the, the governor, the substantive governor right, he just said, and may, I may be wrong, that the man passed on in his house and not Germany. I don't know if uh, you heard him right, but we should find out where he passed on uh, to the great beyond, because that's also important. Because the family issued a statement saying he died in Germany. Deputy, I mean, his uh, former deputy is now saying he passed on his house. Maybe it's a grammatical issue. 
I don't know. But I'm saying that uh, if he hadn't died, we would still have been, there would still have been a lacuna. Hmm. You uh, know, and it should not be accepted uh, next time. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, sorry to butt in here because I think, yes, you heard right. And uh, I, I also heard him say he passed on in his home in Ibadan there. Uh, there were reports first uh, that he passed on in Germany and another in Lagos, and now we just heard this. But again, if you put all of that into what you just said, because you said day, day, uh, does it also mean that there were, you know, some puppet masses who were at play while the former governor was ill? Well, if you've looked at the pictures of uh, this substantive governor visiting the home of uh, Governor Akredo, late Governor Akredo today, you see the demeanor of the wife and uh, the the contempt in the way he was looking at uh, this uh, this governor who had just come to visit. You will know that it was all manipulative, uh, and she's acting all sad now. But so three days ago, the wife of the governor was in the state and insulting everybody that they had Bush people. Uh, a week ago, he met with uh, some members of the House of Assembly. And now we are finding out tonight that uh, Akredo didn't die in in, uh, in Germany. So they are all lying to the public that he died in Germany. Maybe they wanted to use that uh, to take some more money out of the state. I don't get it. Everything is a lie. You know, now we may have to demand to see Akredo uh, body physically to be sure that uh, he, he hasn't died a long time ago and buried before they came up to announce it. Because basically, what these people did, the wife, his son, and the political cabal in Ondo State, was just use his vulnerable condition to take out their greed on the state. Five million people. They're just taking out money, forging signatures. That's why I say that if this was a sinner society, these people would be investigated and properly investigated and indicted or the criminal acts they perpetrated using a vulnerable man. This should not have happened to a credible at all. And um, that they could do this to their family, you can understand why they are so mean towards the people of Ondo State. And, you know, people will say, well, this is not the time to say it. But we had to say this during Yaradwa's time. Unfortunately, we didn't learn from it. That's why this happened. Because had the law been properly done at that time, after the Yaradwa saga, we would not have had to go through this. And this is a shame. It's a shame that now we are finding out tonight that he died in his house. As of yesterday, he said he died in Lagos. A family, because I saw an, a, a statement issued by the family today, signed by one Akere Dulu Jr., saying that he died in Germany. They even passed on information yesterday to the media that he died somewhere near Hanover in Germany. So they were they're still manipulating as we speak. But I knew as of yesterday that something is fishy about because when uh, President uh, Tinumbu issued his own statement, he never mentioned where he died. Lagos State, he never mentioned. It's, it's unusual that they all did not want to talk about where he died. I have a feeling, and I might be wrong, that this man probably died a long time ago before now, and they just kept him wrapped up somewhere in a cooler. Well, sure. I, I know you, you just like uh, so many other uh, Ondo citizens are concerned about developments in your state. While we uh, wait for our uh, journalists, you're also a journalist and a politician, to unearth what truly uh, is amiss or what was amiss before his death. Let us in on, you know, the future of Ondo state. Uh, the new governor, Aida Tiwa, uh, just uh, within hours yesterday, uh, rejigged slightly his cabinet and another, uh, you know, some couple of uh, things he's done today. Uh, what do you think the future holds uh, for the man who is now on the saddle? Unfortunately, I don't have any hopes that things will change. Um, Aida Tsua was a uh, deputy to Akere Dolo, he's a member of the ruling APC. You know their character. They're not going to do anything different. And then Sadly for Ondo State, this is political transition period. I hear that we're trying to, we we'll probably try to get the um, the ticket of uh, for the primaries from the APC, and uh, they won't have time for governors. They just want to try and see what they can do to get him uh, into the electoral uh, mode, and that will be it. Um, even if there were no elections, these are the guys who are running Ondo State for 
almost seven years now. There's nothing to show for it. So I don't have any reason to lie or give people undue hope that uh, something fundamentally will change in another state. It is not in their character to uh, to go to work even when they have the opportunity. We're so honest enough to say even you yourself, you were slow to have acted just like some other notable Ondo citizens when things were really, really bad. Now, looking forward, uh, what do we expect from you and uh, other good citizens of Ondo State in terms of uh, helping to forge a better development in the state? Say that our focus has never been on one state. It's been about Nigeria and how to liberate Nigeria. We would we would have done this if it was a Kaduna state. We would have done the same if it was a Nambra or a Do state. Anywhere, you know, uh, if you recall very vividly, uh, because you've been a journalist for a long time, we marshaled the struggle to get Yaradua to leave power. Um, you know, not him, but his cabal. And also, you know, you remember Taraba State when there was a governor crashed and they were manipulating the process, just like this. We were also involved in ensuring that uh, justice was done, though it was delayed. So I would have done this regardless. But yes, I'll be humble enough to say that uh, we acted late from the perspective of civil society uh, in Ondo in State. We should have uh, stepped up earlier. So let me just humbly say I apologize that we didn't do this earlier. But we came in at the right time, and uh, now, We've done our part, and it's up to Ayed Atiwa and uh, his uh, colleagues uh, to take the state forward. I just say to you, I doubt they will do anything different. <laughs> you know, and you can call me, you know, you can say that I'm too cynical, but, you know, maybe for the first time I'll be proven wrong, and I'll be fine with it. Well, we'll wait to see how that pans out. I'd like to thank you for your time, Shawari. Many thanks for speaking with us on